Hi, I'm Olivia from Wilkinson Cameras and today I'm going to talk through the latest drone and model aircraft code updates and how they might affect drone pilots. So as of January 1st, 2026, if you own a DJI drone or thinking about buying one, this video is just here to calmly walk you through what's changing and what you actually need to do. No panic, no legal jargon, just the important bits explained properly. First things first, if you already fly a DJI drone today, you're not suddenly grounded. Most people can keep flying exactly as they are as long as they understand which category their drone falls into and make a few simple checks. These new rules are mainly about clarity, safety and making it easier for everyone to know what their drone can and can't do. One of the biggest changes is something called UK class markings. From January 2026, any brand new drone placed on the UK market must have a UK class mark like UK 0, 1, 2 and so on. DJI drones released after this date will come with one of these marks clearly shown on the drone itself. This class mark basically tells you where you're allowed to fly and how close you can be to people without you needing to memorize loads of rules. If you already own a DJI drone that was bought before 2026, it probably won't have a UK class mark. That's completely fine. These are now called legacy drones and you can still fly them legally by following the existing rules based on your drone's weight. You don't need to upgrade just because of this new system. Now let's talk about how this affects popular DJI models you've most certainly heard of like the DJI Air 3S, the Mavic 4 Pro and other Mavic series drones. These drones are heavier and more capable than something like a mini series, so they don't automatically fall into the super lightweight class. What the class mark system does is give manufacturers like DJI a way to officially tell the regulator and users exactly what kind of operations those drones are suitable for. For example, whether you're in the UK 1 over people category or UK 2 near people category, once DJI assigns that mark. That matters because it affects where you can legally fly around people and towns. At the moment, most Air 3S and Mavic 4 Pro and similar DJI models in the UK are treated as legacy under the old system because they were sold before the UK class markings rules kicked in. That means for now, they follow the weight-based rules and you still need the right flyer ID and operator's ID but they don't yet have an official UK class mark printed on them. The CAA recognises European C class marks like C1 as equivalent to UK1 until the end of 2027. So this gives a bridge for drones like the Air 3S into the new system while manufacturers work on updates. This isn't your responsibility to guess, only DJI can declare and provide the official UK class mark for each model. Once that's done and if the drone carries the correct UK class mark, that's when the simpler class-based rules truly apply. Until then, treat your Air 3S or Mavic 4 Pro or Mavic series drone as a legacy drone until the current drone code and UK's weight-based approach. So while all that sounds technical, what really matters day to day is how and where you fly. Another thing worth briefly touching on is separation distances from people and buildings. While the overall structure of open category hasn't changed, the class marking system is designed to make these distances clearer at a glance. The open category is for everyday low risk drone flying and is split into three categories based on how close you can fly to people. So you've got A1 lets you fly over people but not crowds, A2 allows flying near people with caution and A3 is flying far away from people and built up areas. Instead of trying to memorize different rules, the UK class mark on the drone tells you how close you're allowed to fly to people and built up areas. Until a drone officially carries a UK class mark from the manufacturer, you should continue to follow the existing weight-based separation rules in the current drone code. 
especially when flying near towns or uninvolved people. It's also worth mentioning geo-awareness tools. These aren't new laws, but the CAA is putting more emphasis on pilots using apps and built-in systems to check their airspace restrictions before flying. Many DJI drones already include geo-awareness features, and there are also free apps that show flight restriction zones, controlled airspace, and temporary no-fly areas. Using these tools doesn't change the rules, but it does make it much easier to fly responsibly and avoid accidentally straying somewhere you shouldn't. I'll link a few useful apps and tools in the description box below. Another change that catches people out is flying at night. From January 2026, if you fly a drone at night, it must have a green flashing light switched on. Most DJI drones already have this built in, but if yours doesn't, you'll need to attach a small green flashing light before flying. It's purely about visibility so other aircraft and people can see you more easily. Now, let's talk about IDs because this is where a lot of confusion usually comes from. If you fly a drone that weighs 100 grams or more, you need a flyer ID. That means passing the free online theory test on the CAA website, and this applies to most DJI drones, including the Air 3S, Mavic 4 Pro, and even apply to some minis once accessories push them over that way. The test isn't scary, it's common sense kind of stuff, and I probably would recommend it anyway, and it lasts for five years. If you own the drone rather than just flying someone else's, you'll also need an operator ID in certain cases. You need this if your drone weighs 250 grams or more or if it weighs 100 grams or more and has a camera, which again includes pretty much every DJI drone you can think of. Your operator ID must be labeled clearly on the drone itself. One of the newer ideas being introduced is remote ID. For DJI drones that do get UK class markings, remote ID must be active when you fly. This means your drone broadcasts basic information like your operator ID while it's in the air. From 2026, this applies to UK class marked drones, and from 2028, it will also apply to older legacy drones as well. DJI is already building this into their systems, so for most users, it would just be a case of keeping your firmware up to date and making sure it's switched on when required. Another important background change is that the CAA is becoming the UK's official market surveillance authority for drones. This doesn't affect how you fly day to day, but it does mean that the CAA can check that drones sold in the UK meet safety standards. It's aimed at manufacturers and sellers, not hobby flyers, and it's designed to stop unsafe or non-compliant drones entering the market. So the overall takeaway here is that nothing is being done to catch people out. If you're flying responsibly, keeping your DJI drone up to date, and you've got the right ID for your setup, you're already most of the way there. These changes are about making the rules clearer as more drones share the sky. If you're ever unsure, the CAA website is always the final word, and it's worth checking it directly rather than relying on rumors or social media panic posts. I'll link everything official below so you can double check your own setup in your own time. Hopefully that clears things up, makes it feel a bit less intimidating, and helps you keep flying confidently in 2026 and beyond. And that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for camera, lens, drone reviews, and updates like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.